Welcome back to the channel of SGTV. In today's video, we're going to be talking to you about EBBs. Now, they're a bit of a subject where people are a bit like, it's probably a grey, grey art, isn't it? Well, a wee bit, yeah. I think it's perhaps because they don't tend to open regulation or, or section 710. And so, of course, they don't realise whenever they're working in those locations is there. But certainly, it seems to be a bit of a grey art. Yeah, we've been going all over the country talking to people at some of the shows um, around special locations. And we always mention the 710. Obviously, we, we're going to because we've got products that sit within uh, that range. Now, we sit there and ask them and they go, hmm, not really interested in, in engaging with, uh, with 710. And we've spoken to a few contractors actually out on site. And again... They're still not referencing that 710 medical locations, are they? So in today's video, we're going to be really focusing on the EBB part and where we need them, why we need them, and what type of products it is that we're looking for. So stay tuned for the rest of the video, and uh, we'll get straight into it, Tim. So yeah. what is an EBB, first and foremost? Right. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is an equipotential bonding buzz bar, and, and it's a very simple uh, uh, product. It has uh, effectively buzz bars and we connect equipotential bonding to it. And, and, and we then also connect that back to uh, the distribution board from which all of these circuits uh, subsequently would go, so yeah. So the setup that we've got here today is not something that you would typically see. I mean, you know, you, you typically see these types of sockets around and, and the POAG and the medical ones, but you wouldn't typically see this inside the group one or two location, would you? They, they would tend not to be installed within the location. They would be installed just outside. That's the requirement of the standard. They require them to be accessible, visible, but why would you need them actually within the group one and group two location? You need to be able to access them readily. You've got to be testing them. You've got to be working on them. So, so no, outside, just outside, but, uh, but, but obviously not upstairs or not at the end of a corridor, not at the, it's, it's got to be local to where they're installed. And one of the regulations or one of the parts I see in there as well, it needs to be with infection control in mind as well. So you don't want to be storing this above a ceiling, do you? That's right. You don't want dust dropping down and the rest of it. So because, because you do have to access this annually to actually carry out uh, testing to ensure that the ongoing uh, 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 0.20 maximum is still available. So as part of the ongoing maintenance, you want them readily accessible. Okay. So what is it that we're trying to achieve with this product? Right. What so let's, go, let's go all the way back, all the way back. Let's go all the way back. There, there is a requirement within Section 710 and it, it, it's, it's uh, uh, Regulation Group 415 within that. And what it says is, look, because you're in group one and group two medical locations, because you've got vulnerable patients, because you've got all of these concerns that you've got, if something were to go wrong, and because of their vulnerability, we want to ensure that touch voltages are strictly limited. Okay. And what we do is we, we say that, 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 that under regulation, I think it's uh, 411.3.2.5, just says, look, uh, uh, we want to limit the touch voltage below 25 volts AC or 60 volts DC, and we do this by connecting all of the uh, uh, means of earthing within uh, socket outlets, uh, any extraneous conductive parts, any exposed conductive parts, uh, any metal grid in the floor that's within those locations that this relates to, they all come back to this common point, and that means that within that location, when you test between the earth pin of that socket, for example, or that socket, and you then test to some uh, copper pipe work coming up, it's not more than 0.2 ohm. And so between every point of metal work, it's strictly limited to this 0.2 ohm maximum, and that enables that to happen. Okay. And it's a shall. These have to be installed. This is not an optional extra. Okay, let's bring that in a little bit then. Let's think about people that are doing sort of upgrades within hospitals. Are they now required to fit these then? Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, because, because we are required to conform to the current standard. And so the current standard requires the installation of uh, a potential bonding bus. Uh, just going through that again as well, when we think about things like RCDs, at the time of installation, they weren't required perhaps. Is that something that is an option for these types of products as well? What, in terms of RCDs? Not the RCDs, of, the fact that we didn't need the RCDs when it was installed, but now we're being told yeah. we need to have it yeah. installed. In, in, in a sense, if you look back through the history 
of, of standards development. Yeah. I mean, primarily these probably, in, in all likelihood, came from the HTMs. Yeah. Uh, and 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 sort of got introduced at, at, at a subsequent point within BSM six seven one. So it sits within that. Um, but as I say, it sits as a shall. They shall be installed and they shall be for group one and group two locations. Now this is the the forty way version that we've got here. We obviously do it in a, a smaller one as well. Yeah. So. Is, is there a specific requirement for what needs to be in there, the minimum ways, the maximum ways when it comes no, to these products? No, there's no, there's no specific requirement about, uh, about the numbers. What you've got to have is a sufficiency. Yeah. So if you're in a group one medical location or a group two and you've got all of these circuits and it's got lots of circuits and it's got lots of exposed and extraneous conductive parts that want linking back to here, if they clearly have more than 18, you want the 40 way because you need to have enough ways. You can't be just bolting things on uh, randomly. You need to be able to safely access them for, for proper controlled testing regimes. So it's, it's, there's no minimum, there's no maximum. It's got to be enough for the location. Yeah, so there's no point. You don't want to be doubling these up. That's probably the no, point I was getting it. to. Yeah. So if you're using an 18 and you think, oh, I'm going to get away with it, yeah. well, actually, on the back of the lid, there's a chart that comes with it and it says that this is. Yeah. in this location Absolutely. and this is what it is Absolutely. so be mindful that when you are looking at installing these please don't be thinking that you could just double these connections up because they are there is enough there for you to put in additional connections if 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 you were to think you could do so but they do need their own individual um numbering system so yeah. and and of course there is a requirement within 7671 for them to be labeled yeah. so, so as you rightly say and how do you label when you've got two random circuits connected into the same place now we've got obviously got the cover off on this one as well. The cover does go on, it is a nice wipeable surface yeah. with that infection control in mind, as we've mentioned already. The other thing I want to draw your attention to is these POAG sockets. Now we've already spoke about equalizing the potential between all of the um sockets, yeah. etc. But what what are these for? What are these what are these trying to achieve? Well, in a sense, they're 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 a related item. Um so so you would have a a, a a POAG near to a bedhead. It allows for uh, medical electrical equipment that 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 is being used to to uh, uh, provide a service to a patient to to guarantee that there will not be a difference in potential by actually plugging in and connecting to ensure that the system around it is locked into this system is locked into that medical so equipment. If we imagine them, we've got a something that's plugged into it. This is a life. Yep. critical service that's yep. being pl yep. plugged in yep. whatever it may be that that's yep. that's plugged in you imagine that all these things between each other are 0 0.2 ohms yeah all of a sudden you put in a socket in here and that flex that's going from there is of such value so it could be a 0.75 flex yep. but you start dragging that out over three meters you've got a difference you've got a difference that's right so the idea of these poag sockets says then tim is to take a point from there to that appliance to yeah. ensure that the, the cable is great enough to make sure that there's not that point to this difference. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, Jake, yeah. So what do we need to do with them? Because we can see we've got two on a plate here. Yeah. Where, how many do we need per group and location? Yeah, it, it varies dependent on, on, on which uh, location and if it's a group one or group two. Group two, uh, one for every uh, bedhead, just one to one. Yeah. Uh, once you're into a group one location, then there's a wee bit of flexibility uh, and, and, and some minimum statement. And there's some guidance within 7671. There's a note attached to it and says that as a minimum, there'd be a 25% for uh, a number of socket outlets. But, but th there are some numbers attached to 7671 that would need checking. But certainly, you're not required to put in one to one. Okay. So uh, it's, not one, it's one not one ABB, one, no. one POAG socket? No. It depends on the location. Group two, absolutely. Yeah. It's one-to-one. -one. Now, just coming back to the EBB itself then, Tim, we can see that, that this cable in the middle here yeah. is slightly thicker than the ones on the yeah. outside. Yeah. What's the minimum requirement for the main bond? Because you right. can see this one's got a, a thicker stud yeah. in the middle. That's yeah. where we're going to yeah. be taking our main bond yeah. to. Yeah. Well, interestingly, if you look, look at these, what are these, Jake? Four mil? Yep. 2.5s? Well, of course, you could have these as 1.5s or, or 2.5s, depending on what circuit it's feeding yeah. or, or, or how it's being run. This conductor has to be, as a minimum, at least as large as the largest bond. Bond, and 
That being said, you want at least, therefore, a minimum of four mil, simply for mechanical protection. Yeah. Um, in this instance, we're looking at six mil, uh, and that's fine for all of the ones that are connected here. Um, and it, it, it does the business. But I would go, I, I, it's not a requirement of 7671, but as a minimum, I would tend to go with four mil simply because of the mechanical protection required. Okay. Now, just keeping on with the same sort of theme over against protection, is there any requirements for additional protection for these in uh, particular? It, it, not for these connections, that, that, no, that, 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 that's, that's fine. Now, as they are, as you see this here, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, you've got a lid on it, you know, yeah. open access, but, but in terms of additional protection, uh, mechanical protection there, that there's, there's nothing there that, that requires. So how do we determine what a Group 1 and Group 2 location or zero, 1 and 2? Yeah, zero, 1 and 2. Zero, zero is general sort of locate waiting rooms and, yeah. and, and the things. And generally, we, it's, it's the grouping is, is tied to the nature of uh, medical service that goes on. So uh, just sitting there and, and a massage room, and we smiled about this before, haven't we? Many a time. <laughs> but it, it, it goes, it goes, and it, it, it tends not to be medical equipment. You're not, you're not being worked on with technical stuff being yeah. prodded at you, and that, that tends to be a group naught. Uh, once you get into group one, though, of course, you could be. You could be uh, in a doctor's clinic, and they may be a, a testing certain things, and, and suddenly there's a level of risk that's risen slightly. If you're in an operating theatre and you're a group two location, the level of risk is, is through the roof. Uh, you are totally vulnerable. There is no escape uh, when you're on that table. And therefore, you, you need to have the additional protections that this sort of stuff brings in. So, so, so you go, it's not going overboard. It's recognizing the nature of the inability of the patient to escape from charge. Yeah. So if you're looking for where you need these and you're working in a specific locations within a hospital or where it's in a medical location, there is an annex for that as well, isn't there? 710 annex at the yeah. back of the book. Yeah. Have a little look at that yeah. and it will give you clear ideas. That's right. It gives you an indicator. Yeah. And, 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 and that's therefore got to be considered in the light of the practitioner. So you'd be talking to the doctors and, and what have you as a designer thinking about, well, exactly what are we looking at here? But certainly within 710, there's that clear guidance of, of, of examples. Okie dokie. I think we've covered it already, haven't we? What about testing? Testing, yeah. So we've got this in, in situ. I know you mentioned briefly a few moments ago about that they need to be tested, but what, again, is it to make sure that this is still the right reading or is it to make sure that there's nothing been changed within the system when it comes to testing these EBUs? Yeah, I suppose the, the, the point is when you come to do the testing, you're not actually necessarily testing these points of connection. What you will be testing is between the earth pin of the socket outlet and extraneous and exposed conductive parts. And you'd be working between it, guaranteeing that between those elements, that 0.2 ohm value is not exceeded. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a requirement that's on top of the normal uh, electrical testing that's in chapter 64. So, so there's some recording on an EIC that would need to take place. And interestingly, in terms of ongoing maintenance, Jake, this has to be done annually. Yeah. There's an annual requirement to carry out tests to check that that 0.20 ohm maximum. And that's from the book, is it? That's from 7671 the book. 7671 says it's got to be done. 710.651, it is a requirement within 7671. Okay. So, Make sure that if you are working in these, they are being tested annually. As Tim's mentioned, on an EIC, it needs to be recorded to say that these are located, yeah. where they're located, and how many points. You may even want to have your own schematic set up, yeah. and yeah. I'm sure that yeah. there are lots of people yeah. that will have that uh, covered off as well. But then again, going forward as part of your ongoing maintenance, it needs to be to make sure that it's tested once a year to ensure that these connections haven't deteriorated, things haven't been added, or there's been some damage and someone's not uh, tightened one of the connections up, up mm. correctly. So it could be they've changed the socket. Yeah, uh, and you may need to you may yeah. need to do that. So anything else you want to mention? Mm, I think I'm done. I think you're done. Okay. So well, that's been myself, Jack Green, and Tim Benstead talking about 710 medical locations and more specifically uh, around EBBs. Thank you for joining us. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Till next time, we'll see you again soon.